time, there are no culinary applications for bloodstone dust. None. No good can come from feeding it to living beings. <sighs> what do you know? Oh. I'll take the dust to the streets and start my own food cart. I'll be rich. Okay, hello, it's Mayor Chef, and today we're going to be making some bloodstone bear claw pastries. Sounds easy enough, but what actually is a bear claw pastry? Originally, I thought it meant a pastry pinwheel filled with bear meat, because the in-game icon for the food showed a pinwheel. Now, this is actually the same icon for another food, the cinnamon pinwheel. So I thought, maybe there's a mistake here. Now, if you look up bear claw pastry, they originate from the US, and their pastry is filled with almond paste in the shape of bear claws. So, I'm not sure which one it's meant to be, and being a bloodstone dish made by the handsome sous chef Seymour Oxbone, no ingredients list is given. So, let's make both. Firstly, the recipes contain two of the same ingredients, pastry and bloodstone. So we'll start off by making the bloodstone. So here we have 400 grams of caster sugar, liquid glucose, 100 milliliters of water, some orange extract, red food coloring, and a sprinkle of icing sugar. Originally, I was going to use the juice of one blood orange. However, by using food coloring and orange extract, you can get a stronger orange taste and a deeper red. So to a pan over medium heat, add the sugar, water, and one tablespoon of liquid glucose. Ideally, you want to add the food colouring and orange extract at the end of the cooking phase, otherwise the boiling can cause the colour and flavour to disperse. You're going to want to keep the mixture on this medium heat and keep stirring it until all the sugar dissolves. So now the mixture is a lot more runny and the sugar has dissolved. Turn up the heat and stop stirring. Place a thermometer in the mixture and you're going to want to continue heating up to 150 degrees C or 310 Fahrenheit. At this point you'd want to add the food colouring and orange extract and you can smell a nice caramelly flavour. Line a tray with baking paper and dust with the icing sugar. This will help to stop the bloodstone from sticking. Pour the bloodstone onto the tray and move it around so it's evenly spread. Then you're going to want to let this cool down for one hour until the mixture has solidified and you have your bloodstone slab. So after one hour the bloodstone has hardened and you can begin breaking it up. I suggest folding it and smashing it with a rolling pin or a hammer. This also helps to break it away from the baking paper, but it's up to you. Once broken up, you may find that some of the paper is still attached to it, so I found that an easy way to take it off is by adding a little bit of water and this slightly dissolves the bloodstone, allowing the paper to be taken away easily. And once refined, your bloodstone should look something like this. I suggest panning it down with a paper towel and storing it in a dry place as moisture is bloodstone's worst enemy. Now that the bloodstone is made, it's time to move on to the pastry. Now bear claw pastries are traditionally made with Danish pastry and so I'll use that for both recipes, although puff pastry can be substituted, with the difference being Danish contains yeast so it's more bready like a croissant. So let's start with making the pastry. Here we have 10 grams of instant yeast, 8 grams of caster sugar mixed with 10 grams of salt, 125 millilitres of milk at room temperature, 90 millilitres of cold water, 500 grams of strong white bread flour, and two eggs. Then combine flour, salt, sugar, and yeast in a mixing bowl, followed by the water, eggs, and milk. Attach a dough hook or a paddle, and mix on a slow speed for two minutes, then on a medium speed for six minutes. If your dough is sticky, add a little extra flour, then lightly flour some cling film and tip the dough onto a surface. Shape into a ball, dust with flour and put it into a clean plastic bag and chill in the fridge for an hour. On baking paper, draw out a 33 by 19 centimeter rectangle, flatten a 250 gram block of unsalted butter into the rectangle so it fits that shape and leave the chill in the fridge as you don't want the butter to melt whilst you're making the dough. Then draw out a 50 by 20 centimeter rectangle lightly dust with flour and roll out the dough so it's one centimeter thick and fits the rectangle like so. Then take your butter and place it on the dough so that it covers the bottom two thirds of it. Fold the exposed dough over the butter and then fold the other third on top of that. Seal the edges of the pastry, wrap in cling film and store in the fridge for one hour. Then take your dough and roll it out again into a 50 by 20 centimeter rectangle and repeat the folding. Place back in the fridge for one hour and repeat this two more times. Afterwards you have a nice marbling with the butter and if I cut through, you can see the laminations caused by the folding. I made one batch each for the different types of pastries. So now that the bloodstone and the pastry are both made, we can begin making the different variations starting off with the traditional bear claw recipe. Here we have 200 grams of icing sugar, 500 grams of ground almonds, 3 egg whites, 1 tablespoon of amaretto, 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter and 1 tablespoon of almond extract. Now you're going to want to add all these ingredients to the bowl and why not have a cheeky bit of amaretto for yourself. 
Then use an electric whisk or paddle, mix the ingredients until you get a nice thick paste. Next take your pastry, roll it out and slice into four even strips. Then you're going to want to cover all of them in the almond paste and sprinkle with the bloodstone. After that fold over the pastry and seal the edges. Flatten with a rolling pin and cut into equal parts. Then cut little toes in the pastry so that when they're bent they look like that. Place on a lime baking tray, brush with egg to give a nice golden brown finish and leave to cook in the oven at 200 degrees C or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes. Mmm, delicious. Then feel free to garnish your bear claws with almonds, bloodstone and ice and sugar for the money shot. And so, here we have traditional US bloodstone bear claws, but they look nothing like the in-game picture. So let's make the second type of bear claw. So I thought that as bear claw was in the name, then bear meat was in the pastry, but the closest thing I could find was 300 grams of minced beef, then one teaspoon of mixed herbs, half a minced onion, and one minced garlic clove, and 40 grams of prunes or dates. Then combine all the ingredients together and mix with your hands. Next, add your bloodstone and mix until it all comes together. Take your pastry and roll it out into a rectangle. Then flatten the filling onto it, Next, roll it up like a Swiss roll and begin to slice into pieces. Place on a baking tray, egg wash and bake in the oven for 15 minutes at 200 degrees C or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Leave to cool on a wire rack. And one thing to notice, because bloodstone is basically sugar, it will caramelise, causing the pastries to stick to the paper. If you make sure none of the bloodstone is in contact with the paper, then that will help to prevent this. And so, here we have the other variation of bloodstone bear claw pastries, and let's garnish that with a bit of parsley. And honestly, they taste really good. The pastry is nice and flaky, the filling is soft, and it's a great combination of sweet and savoury with the beef and the bloodstone melting, almost creating the taste of a caramelised onion chutney. Here we have a side by side comparison with the Guild Wars 2 icon and one thing to notice is there aren't any burnt bits on theirs. That's because in Guild Wars 2 I'm afraid to say bloodstone is not made out of sugar. However with this cool new substitute there are definitely culinary applications for bloodstone dust. Unfortunately I'm still not sure which bear claw pastry it's meant to be, maybe it should be the spirals as they look the same as the in game icon or maybe they should be shaped as bear claws as that's the traditional style for the pastry. Either way you can get these delicious treats from Seymour in Divinity's Reach every Thursday. Now I hope you enjoyed the video, see you soon and thank you.